this evening is all about putting children and young people at the heart of our churches. This is Bishop Sophie's spot, so I'm just going to welcome our bishop, the Bishop of Doncaster's in the house. I've got your slides and they're ready to go. Just to prove it, look at that. Did you want this thing or this thing? vision for um, putting children and young people at the heart um, of things and um, I do a lot of travelling about the diocese, being in all different kinds of places um, and so um, I'm going to show you some uh, pictures I think I'm right in saying um, I, I always have permission for the pictures I take by the way just to be very clear, thinking about safeguarding, um, but I'm also um, it's a really easy topic for me to talk about because everywhere I go, um, there are fabulous stories around children and young people. Um, and so all the pictures I'm going to show you are real um, stories, real pictures of real people from our diocese that you might not know about. Some of them might, I don't know where you're all from, some of them might connect with you particularly. Um, but um, I'm incredibly proud to be in the Diocese of Sheffield. This is an easy conversation in our diocese. Um, that's not necessarily the case everywhere. Um, and so I thought I'd just um, flick through some of these with you to talk about um, the value of this. Um, so in, um, we've lived in Africa, in, in Uganda, for a while um, as a family. Um, and... Um, you'll probably be aware of the um, African um, proverb that it takes a village to raise a child. Um, I think it takes a church uh, to raise a Christian, and particularly um, the whole church um, to grow um, people in their discipleship. Um, and so I think sometimes people count themselves out of children in youth ministry because they don't think they've got much to bring. Um, but actually, we all have an incredible amount to bring. Um, it doesn't mean you have to be down with the kids in a particular way, but actually children are really um, incredibly aware of how authentic you are towards them and how you take an interest in them, and that just pays dividends in a world where a lot of people don't get the attention um, that they perhaps deserve um, or aren't perhaps uh, loved um, in the right way. Um, just one of the really basic things we can do is um, really prioritise relationships. And I'm sure that's really obvious to you, but I see that going all over the place. So um, uh, this is a picture of a um, school confirmation. I don't do very many of these these days. Um, and if I'm honest, um, I think that I prefer them sort of integrated into the life of the church, really. Um, but um, this one was a really um, special... Uh, one where um, the year five sixes had been prepared together um, for um, this moment in their lives. And you can tell by their faces what it means for them, can't you? Um, but one of the key things about this uh, situation was that at the back you can see, um, uh, to my um, right, um, you can see Vicky, who is um, the minister and area dean in that place. And then um, to the left, you can see our director of education. Um, and he actually spoke at this service. I think he probably brought Bernard, his puppet. Um, he tends to travel with him from time to time. The children are used to him visiting school. Um, but I suppose I wanted to show you that because it's a joined up. Um, it shows the joined up nature of our work across school, church and household. So the church is full of the parents. Uh, many of them perhaps don't necessarily um, share their child's enthusiasm for, for, um, for the gospel, but it um, was really lovely to see um, that intersection between um, the school, church and household. Um, why isn't that doing anything? Should it be doing something? Have I pointed it the wrong way? Oh, Okay. Is it, does it mute Stephen? No? <laughs> He's already muted. Oh, there it is. Did I do two then, or just one? Uh, that was just one. Just one, okay. Um, so this is our scene training project. Anyone heard of that? <laughs> um, so what I 
really loved about this, this was just one of the networking mornings, um, what I loved about this, and some of you would have been there, um, was the, um, uh, well I loved what it said about the work on the screen, which you can read for yourself, what some of the impact of the work um, that we do, sorry is it batteries? Um, uh, the impact of what we do, but also um, it's, it demonstrates the importance of the support for the worker because what I loved about that day was seeing people come as a team. Um, and I think that um, you know that this can be very isolated work, so the support, the prayer, um, the ongoing encouragement, um, and just the getting the ideas together as you've done today by sharing some of the resources that you've come across and that kind of thing is really good. Um, you'll probably know that most children and youth workers like um, leave uh, the work, I'm talking about the employed ones particularly, um, through lack of support or poor line management very often. Um, and so one of the things that, um, we pride ourselves on here is support for workers. Now, that principle, you might not all have a worker, that's not the point. The principle is the same. Wherever there is youth and children's work going on, yes, safeguarding is absolutely imperative, but the support, the backup for the worker and for the groups, the prayer support, the volunteers, um, the, if, even resourcing, um, is really uh, crucial for the work flourishing. Um, so these were all things about how we put children at the heart of our operation. Is this going to work now? Oh, yes, there we go. Um, so um, I think God is doing a thing among teenagers. I'd like to put it more profoundly than that, but at the moment it's just a thing. Um, I think he's doing a thing in the lives of 14 to 17-year-olds. I know that sounds very specific, um, but I've been speaking to different people who work in different dioceses, um, and I'm finding it to be true here. So this is a bunch of 17-year-olds who all decided together that they A, wanted to follow Jesus, and B, wanted to get confirmed. They do not grow on trees. They take a whole church to raise um, young disciples. Um, they are absolutely brilliant, and they're on fire. So they're infectious. So the church was full of their friends from school, some of whom are wondering what on earth has gone on here. Families who don't come to church are finding that these are their children and they're immensely proud, but they're just trying to work out what on earth has gone on. And they gave testimony more boldly and with greater clarity than many adults I know who followed Jesus for a very long time. So this is really exciting and extremely profound. And it's not an isolated event, I just happen to have that picture. So last night I did a beacon event for Thy Kingdom Come, which was at another church, probably about, I don't know how many, a few miles from their church. Um, anyway, um, came out of the loo, and there was a little queue of girls. These girls had come to the beacon event, because they're hungry for God and they want to know more. They've got A-levels this week. They're destined for greatness but they're making time for God. That's exciting, isn't it? Don't you think? But it's all about them being at the heart of the life of the church. So what I saw going on in every bit of the life of that church was that the children and young people are occupy that. That doesn't mean they're treated, um, you know, they find their proper place within it, but it means everything's pointing in the same direction for them to flourish. And that takes real intentionality and a long time and a lot of perseverance. Um, so there was quite a lot of tears about this journey, as there would be, because they're 17. You know, which 17-year-old hasn't had that episode in their lives at least once? Right, where are we going? I'm still... Uh, it's not happening again. Dip. Oh, there we go. Um, so this is Breathe Deep, um, which you've already heard about. Um, and the reason that I um, wanted to take that is because of the way that... Um, all credit to Mike and the team for this... Um, is the energy that went into flipping the event this year. So we've done this event for a while, Mike. How many have you done of these? Have you done it almost every year you've been here? Is it 10? Yeah, we had 10. It was 10. That was 10. We were celebrating 10. So, um, but this year, you were very intentional, weren't you, as a team, about flipping the event so that the young people led it themselves. Um, not like, entirely, but well supported to do that. Um, and I think that, that was one of the secrets to the rising numbers 
because people owned it. Um, but it also had a massive impact, I think, on the diversity um, represented in the room. That's always been higher in my time here. That's always been higher than the general population. But in terms of diversity, I saw greater spread, if you like, in that room. But what was so great was just to see the confidence of some of our young people, um, supported by their youth leaders, to lead events. So to go into the chapter house in the cathedral and to find five, no, four, 15-year-old boys talking about evangelism in a kind of quite awkward way like that. Um, but like authentically, properly themselves, with their youth worker in the wings, you know, spurring them on. I don't think he said a word, but they were able to talk authentically. And they had the whole attention of the whole room, because they would have. That's their peers. Um, so again, this is about the sort of co-creation um, and um, so I think um, we're really excited for next year already, I think, to see uh, what comes of that as some of the um, young leaders' voices we've talked about will really take that work uh, forward. Oh, there we go. Um, so this is the Bishop's Badge competition. There is no credit to me for this. This is all Hannah Sandoval, um, our amazing Lights for Christ enabler. Um, who had a bright idea, basically, and then um, uh, Bishop Pete said, I think that's probably one for you, Sophie. And, uh, so, and it was, so it was my great joy and delight to be able to um, uh, select um, the design for the year. Um, but also, we had um, such, uh, which was that, um, we had such um, great response. I think we had over 800 entries. Um, that we decided to create a runners-up kind of special special commendations, she called it. Um, and then um, all of those children got a, um, a personalised certificate of their design. And so we decided that rather than just send them, them in the post, we'd have a great jamboree and again invite all the families. Uh, to come along and you know dad's got off work early you know the church was full um, and this was just again a way of just saying um, children matter in the life of our diocese and we actually thought that this was quite prophetic if you think about the world we live in one of the messages we need must surely be this so we actually as we prayed over the um the entries, we felt that that was something that God was saying to us, that it was out of the mouths of the children that will be led forward um, for this generation. The world that we're shaping um, will be partly led in response to the children. Um, this is a um, harvest festival in a little church out in, I think it's, uh, it's near, is it Hook? I can't remember. I should know the answer to that, shouldn't I? It's my picture. Um, and uh, what, I, what you can't see is the three little goats that greeted me on the way in. Um, and I should have taken my wellies because it was a little bit muddy. But, um, but what was really lovely about this um, event was just the intergenerational nature of it. So remember when I said about some people feel like they haven't got much to bring to the table? Actually, one of the things that's hugely valued by young people and with young people um, is that relationship across the generations. Um, for us, we might take that for granted. We might have had a great role model in our parents or our grandparents or our extended family or whatever, but there's a lot of children growing up in this world who don't have that. So actually, it's really wonderful that in the church they've got honorary aunties, uncles, grandparents, great-grandparents, people who take an interest in their lives and pray for them. Now, I know that many of you will do this naturally because that's just who you are, because you love children, that's why you're here. Um, but I really loved this um, uh, uh, event because the children were loved as part of the family. Um, and I think when I see that at the heart of our churches, it gives me a lot of encouragement and hope. Um, and so I think that it's just a reminder, really, that one of the places that um, it's one of the very few places where those relationships can exist easily. Now, I know that that can be difficult in terms of safeguarding and other things because people get a bit frightened to, um, you know, be themselves um, in relation to that. Um, but if we have good boundaries in place and we're clear and we help people to be prepared well for that, um, then we can do that relating um, 
with each other. Now, um, this was just a reminder of the school's work that we do. Schools are a really important part of our diocese. Elise has already talked about the church and schools business. Um, but I don't think um, there's... I honestly think that any investment in school life that we can have is worth having. Um, I love this school. This is a part of the um, Nexus Trust that's a um, special school for children with um, uh, additional needs. Um, I don't think I put the picture on it that they did. Did I put a picture on it? I don't know. Is there a picture of a little cartoon on there? Oh, yeah, there is. Yay. I love this picture. Isn't it cute? Can you read it? Do you need a hug? Yes. Um, so they presented me with like a, um, a sort of massive picture that um, uh, I think one of the classes had done for our visit. Um, and they wrote about, they drew things about what their school meant to them and, and stuff like that. And um, the care for, for one another was just really breathtaking and beautiful. Um, so I use this picture sometimes when I talk about clergy well-being. <laughs> Because um, I think quite a lot of clergy probably feel a bit like that person with the hat on. Um, and um, again, our children are, um, they're just wonderful reservoirs of love and hope. Uh, I know they can be absolute little monsters too, because I live with that all the time. But the actual, um, if we really harness the gifts and um, uh, um, the gifts from our children and their communication to us, um, then I, I just think that, that that's one of the ways in which we can be truly blessed. Um, and of course, um, there's all sorts of um, spin-offs from that uh, in terms of the wider community and what people see us modelling um, through that work. Um, but I also put it up because I think our schools need our prayers, um, and um, our engagement as churches, partly for the growing faith reasons I've mentioned, um, but also because um, I'm particularly aware as chair of the Board of Education about the children who do have additional needs, uh, for whom their parents are very often having to fight for every single thing, every single day um, that their children need, and that is very wearing. So where are we um, putting uh, those who hold up the, ha the arms of those, of those parents? Now, I know that children don't all have that in their lives, and that's a sadness, but I do think that there's support around the families, um, particularly with children with additional needs, that um, many of our churches are pouring lots of time into that, and rightly so, um, in my experience. Um, I guess that po points to the question of what we have for children with additional needs in the life of our churches. Um, I know that can be really resource heavy, um, but um, just I think if you need practical help with that, like um, you know, safety planning around children who are unpredictable in their behavior, all those sorts of things, we can help you resource some of that. Um, so so don't, don't despair, because um, it can be very labor intensive, you know, especially if there's one-to-one -one help needed. Um, for particular children. Um, this is Megan. I think it's Megan. I always get her mixed up with her friend. Um, is it Megan? Good. Phew, well done. Um, so um, I'm showing you Megan because Megan um, uh, basically wrote me a letter, apparently, but I can't really remember it, but I must have responded because she told me I did, um, to say that she couldn't work out why her and her youth group went to, I think it was Breathe Deep, um, and nobody on the um, stage uh, area, which is where the worship's led from, looked like anybody, looked like her or any of her friends. Um, and um, I'm really pleased to say that that picture's changed dramatically, um, but that's partly because they had the courage to reach out and say, actually, um, this isn't good enough. Um, and um, so this y younger and more diverse theme runs right the way through the diocese, right the way through the Church of England. Um, and I think as we grow younger, we will grow more diverse, but it does take intentionality as well. Um, I think we've still got the recording of the Difference um, workshop that they ran at Development Day. Um, if you wanted to see that, that's amazing. Um, but they really helped the, um, those who were in that workshop to think about what difference means and how it's a gift 
um, and something that we shouldn't be afraid of. And the thing that often people do is na naturally, for lots of reasons, the way our brain is wired, we find people like us. Um, and um, we're kind of predisposed to be a bit fearful of people who aren't like us. So there are barriers to overcome in this work, um, but actually our young people are leading the way on that. Um, I've got other pictures of like the whole youth group um, and um, they've gone on to lead some other things with me as well, some of those young people. Um, so that's really, um, really exciting to see. Um, I think that's it. Is that my last picture? Is that my last picture, Stephen? Yep. Oh no, there's another one. Okay, so these are the, is that my last one? Oh, is there some more? Oh, okay, sorry, I got a bit I'll go a bit faster and then we'll finish. Um, so this, was, um, this is a hot chocolate club after school in Dinnington. Um, it's class hot chocolate, by the way, so no, we need quality. Don't be serving any rubbish, no watery rubbish. Um, but this um, is really lovely because what they've done is um, prioritise, there's a particular day where the young people are coming past from secondary school, um, they get a free cho hot chocolate on the way home, but then very cleverly they've built this into their plan. So um, this, um, so behind to to that side of them, there's a there's a the church space, and they set up as a lovely sort of chill out space that they can then drop into after they've had their hot chocolate. Um, and the plan is for that to grow into a youth group. So basically, they've been strategic about what's available, and they've got to know the young people. Um, through the hot chocolate, not in some sort of weird, like have a hot chocolate and then I'll have a conversation, but just naturally um, as they've reached out with their pinnies on um, in order to meet the young people. Um, and the day we went, oh, I mean, there was hundreds of them, I don't know quite how they managed it all. Um, and what's really amazing is that Tesco, no, um, uh, there are other um, supermarkets available, um, released someone, um, I think it's Tesco, it might be co op, anyway. A supermarket worker released someone um, through their social responsibility arm to come and work with them and then give them free stuff. I mean, what's not to like about that? So if you don't ask, it's shy burns getting out, as they say, in the northeast. Oh, was that it? Um, so did I go over two then? Oh, sorry. Oh, one. So this um, was... Um, I've shown this picture because this is Rachel Jordan Wolfe when she came to talk about evangelism a couple of weeks ago, which was absolutely awesome. Look up the Talking Jesus 2022 report. In it, you will find some incredible statistics about the availability of people for the gospel, how many people there are who are keen to hear more about Jesus, and how many families with children under four the church is already engaged with. And so what they've done is very cleverly um, target some particular resources for that work. So they've got really lovely um, Bible story books to give away. They're pretty cheap um, for toddler groups and parent and carer groups and that kind of thing. Um, so this was just really encouraging news um, for us as we thought about um, evangelism. And there are going to be deanery evangelistic days happening um, later in the year. So look out for those because we're really hopeful about children and young people being part of that. Um, I put this one in because this is um, uh, an iftar, which is a breaking of the fast for um, the Muslim community. In um, This one happened to be at Sheffield at Hillsborough Stadium. And I was invited to be one of their speakers. Um, and I wanted to show those children to you because um, we'll have different views on different approaches to different faiths. Um, but I really just wanted to remind you of the world we live in um, and the fact that um, actually how we engage with other faiths is really essential. Some of our church schools do this really well. Um, and so um, I just... Uh, wanted us to be thinking about how we equip the young people that we work with to live in the world as it is today. Um, so we'll have lots of different views about our response to that as Christians, um, but I just um, wanted to remind us that we can live in our own Christian bubble if we're not careful, forgetting um, that we're part of a big word world. So, finally, coming into land, Reasons for Hope 2032. I've put that as a sight line because that's our horizon for the strategy refresh that Mike mentioned earlier. Um, we really um, are very keen on this vision to double the number of children and young people. And actually, if you've only got two young people in your church, four doesn't feel like that many, does it? So, you know, it's all relative. Um, 
The other thing is about hub churches. So having a, the vision is to have a church that's got active children and youth ministry going on within reach of every child and young person. So that's a walk or a very short drive, depending on how you look at it. Um, and then to grow a sustainable pipeline of workers and volunteers, which you've already touched on. Um, I've talked about the growing faith lens, which I'm a really big fan of, uh, have been for a long time. And then take a deep breath in. Today's morning prayer reading was Joshua 1. Be bold and very courageous. What's the worst that could happen? You invite something, someone to something and they say, no, thank you. That's about as much a challenge as we're probably going to get. So I just really want to encourage you to keep on doing the good work that you're doing. Thanks.